these people um so it's spooky month everyone uh happy halloween month um i figured i i saw this from declassified uk it's very spooky um it will terrify you like it should um but yeah it's the phantom the phantom parrot colin there's ghost parrots How, why why are there ghost parrots I'm waiting for ghost parrots. It's spooky. Um, so phantom parrot, the secret state's tool for mass intelligence gathering. Okay. Um, very spooky stuff. The British police can obtain the mobile phone passwords of members of the traveling public in order to download their data in a program linked to spy agency GCHQ a new film shows. So Kate Stonehill over at Declassified. This is from September, um, which is why I know you guys would be talking about it if you had read it because it was a while ago. So um, this is the movie they're talking about, and I'm going to play the trailer. Um, I might throw the little copyright filter on it, but this is like a minute and yeah. something. So we should be okay. Um, hopefully the people that are free speech activists aren't going to come after us for playing it. Um, people should go watch the, the actual movie. Um, you might have to look up how to find it. Um, but Phantom Parrot is the name of the movie. So we're going to, uh, watch the little trailer. You cannot be a good investigator if you do not understand and use technology. Now, everything that we do involves this. We'd need a specific forensic tool to break that encryption for us to get that information out of that phone. If you're asked for your password and you're also threatened that if you do not hand over your password, you could end up in prison for three months, would you give your passwords? In normal situation, they would need like a warrant to get that information. But under this power at the border, they don't need any of that. And they just decide, you know, this person, I'm going to stop this person. Now, these are powers that are capable of being misused. And most powers that are capable of being misused will be misused. So that's that's a little intro. Um... Mm -hmm. Go check out the movie, but uh, Declassified continues. Um, when human rights activist Muhammad, come on, Rabani refused to hand over, which you, you saw, you saw him in that little trailer, uh, hand over the passwords to his electronic devices at Heathrow Airport, he was charged with an offense under Schedule Seven of the Terrorism Act. So just that right there. Just not giving your phone password at an airport, okay? Um, you know, we, we've had a few of our uh, friends um, detained while traveling, similar to this, and if they don't give up their passwords, what do you think happens? Yeah. Okay? Right. So, um, under Schedule 7, right? So this is a UK law that allows authorities to stop anybody um, at the border and ask them for personal information, including passwords. At the time of his stop, Rabani was returning from Doha, the capital city of Qatar. He had been taking testimony from a Qatari man named Ali Al-Marie, who alleges that he was detained and tortured on mainland U.S. soil for being a suspected terrorist. Rabani had never previously been suspected or accused of a crime. Unlike most members of the traveling public, though, he was intimately familiar with the law he was stopped under. At, as the managing director of CAGE, which campaigns against discriminatory state policies related to the war on terror, he routinely works with individuals facing terrorism charges. The documents he obtained from Al-Marie would later form part of a campaign mounted by Cage highlighting allegations of U.S. government torture at the hands of the FBI. Okay, Rabani estimates that he's been stopped around 20 times traveling through airports. He is unequivocal that this stop felt different. 
Very early on in the questioning, without actually going through any substantial interview process, the police officers were asking about my devices, he said to me. When I interviewed him for a new feature documentary, Phantom Parrot, they wanted access to the devices. In a Schedule 7 interrogation, you do not have the right to remain silent. Failure to respond is a potential crime. This effectively turns the refusal to disclose one's passwords into a potential crime, too. What does that sound like, Colin? What right are they taking away if it's ours? Which which one of those? Or, you know, you could, I don't know, um, plead the fifth. Um, yeah. You know, so under this, no pleading of the fifth. So how does that work? Um, Schedule 7 if can be is. exercised without the need for suspicion. Okay? That's a big part of this. They can just decide what is Schedule 7 and what isn't. Okay? It's literally like you you don't even need to smell weed. You can just detain them. Right? <laughs> right? Um, so unlike many other powers, schedule seven can be exercised without the need for suspicion. In theory, anybody passing through a UK port or border can be stopped and compelled to hand over their passwords. When the terrorism act was passed in 2000, British lawmakers originally envisioned schedule seven as a provision that would enable terrorism suspects to be questioned at the border. Even though smartphones didn't exist back then. Parliamentary debates reveal that certain lawmakers expressed concerns about the act's invasion into civil liberties. These politicians recognize the need to strike a delicate balance between national security and societal freedoms. Concerns were raised. Would this law be used to target human rights campaigners or endanger press freedoms? What do you, what do you think, Colin? You think that might be the case? Sure. Yep. Yeah. In many ways, their fears have been realized when the UK government tried to seize a trove of documents linked by none other than Edward Snowden. In 2013, they used Schedule 7 of the Terrorism Act, the same law that Rabani was stopped under. Journalist Glenn Greenwald's husband, David Miranda, was stopped while transitioning through Heathrow Airport. Um, in the process of assisting his husband's report, Miranda's electronic devices were confiscated and he was subject to interrogation for nine hours. May he also rest in peace. Um, right. So a 2016 ruling found that while the authorities' decision to detain Miranda was lawful, the use of Schedule 7 in his case was incompatible with the Eurove European Convention on Human Rights. In a statement acknowledging the petitional chilling effect of Schedule 7, Powers of Journalism, Lord Dyson the judge in the Court of Appeal uh, posted, if journalists and their sources can have no expectation of confidentiality, they may decide against providing information on sensitive matters of public interest. One document leaked by Snowden provides vital context for the experiences of Rabani and Romeranda at the hearts of the UK authorities. It describes a pro program called Phantom Parrot. We're back at it. So which involves a policy of stopping people at the border under Schedule 7 of the Terrorism Act with the explicit purpose of downloading their data, Colin. All their data, right? The document initially reported on by Ryan Gallagher in The Intercept unambiguously illuminates the importance of Schedule 7 to the program's legal framework under a section titled Legalities. It states the data is legally volunteered under Section 7 and Section 8 of TACT, the Terrorism Act, although the person will not be directly told their phone is downloaded. Okay? So you don't even know that they did this, right? No. So <clears throat> the downloads that the document refers to are facilitated by technologies known as mobile device forensic tools. These technologies allow police to extract a full copy of data from a mobile phone, all emails, texts, photos, location, app data, and more, which can then be programmatically searched. According to the leaked documents from GCHQ, the UK's largest intelligence agency, data obtained through Phantom Parrot is fed into a larger database called Lucky Strike, which at the time of its publication contained over a billion records. Um, sounds like the NSA to me. Um, the UK government has not disclosed the number of media downloads it undertakes annually, 
with the use of Schedule 7 drew public outrage once again in April 2023 when it reported that a French publisher was arrested after refusing to hand over the passwords to his electronic devices. The foreign rights manager for French publishing House Editions of La Fabrique was approached upon his arrival at St. Pancrase International while en route to attend the London Book Fair. Among other things, he was questioned about his opinions of Emmanuel Macron and the COVID-19 pandemic. When he refused to hand over his passwords, he was arrested. Um, the real purpose behind Schedule 7 is mass intelligence gathering. The charges against him have been dropped. In the meantime, however, the incident prompted a special report by the independent reviewer of terror legalization, Jonathan Hall. He stated the problem with exercising counterterrorism powers to investigate whether an individual is a peaceful protester or a violent protester is that it is using a sledgehammer to crack a nut. In the eyes of Urbani, the sledgehammer is the point. The real purpose behind Schedule 7 is mass intelligence gathering, he says, and so long as that remains an objective to the state, I don't think we will see Schedule 7 powers being dismantled. Thoughts? Got anything? I mean... <sighs> I mean, we're not surprised at this, but it's just, yeah, it's just a blatant disregard of your personal rights, mm -hmm. and the fact that this is stealing. You're yep. essentially stealing, and it and it's not, and it, and you don't even have to use it for like, you know, I know for journalists in this case, you know, but like anybody, you could steal like credit card like if they really wanted to like credit card they, like yeah anything regarding your identity could be taken away from you and you wouldn't even know it yep so and well, like we, and we've so seen some of our you know uh journalist friends be detained in places like london right. recently and like they weren't arrested mm -hmm. so that leads me to believe that you probably let your phone go, which yeah. I think is what a lot of them did, which means right. they downloaded your data, all right. your data. And like, I was just saying that having vault. lived in London, having lived in London, you know, like that's Heathrow. Like, yes, do Power not London get shit. in any shit. Do not get in any shit in Heathrow. Like, right. Don't try nothing in he like any London airport, really. Because yeah. just as an aside, um, one of my trips to Africa, like we were leaving, uh, we were heading back home. Uh, the night before when we were packing, we lost power. So we basically were packing in the dark. Right. Um, a friend of mine in our group, uh, she got some knife um, that... She did not pack in her luggage. She actually packed it in her carry-on. Yeah. Um, and she got caught, stopped in London, you know, when he scanned their bag, and they were yeah. practically ready to arrest her ass. Right to jail, right and away. Like, yeah, and I was basically, like, being that I was the, you know, has... It's citizenship in London, I was just kind of like, okay, what am I going to do to help this girl? <laughs> you know, like in the event, like, what am I going to do? Like, do I have to stay here with her or do we all go ahead? And like, you know, fortunately, she ended up fine, but obviously they had to take away the knife. But like, but, you know, but point being, like, they could stop you for anything. And this, and this is not to say, to say this is just happening in London. This could happen anywhere. Um, if they, if the CIA or the powers that be chooses to, you know, any suspect that they have can easily do this. So this is not good. No, definitely not, not good. So, but, um, but, you know, I, yeah, but I think it's just a matter of trying to be careful and try not, and, and it's hard, especially with phones, because we have our whole lives in our phones at this point, but you know, if have a backup of your shit somewhere, if at all possible, 
Um, but even with that, that's kind of hard given how connected we are to our smartphones. That basically our whole lives in, in, are in there. So, yeah. but, you know, once they take that information, it's theirs. Yeah, it's theirs. And, and there's not much you can do about it. Right. You can prepare for it and make sure that that's not a problem, you know, do a factory reset on that phone before handing it. I mean, I don't know, you know, like uh, that would be the smart move. Um, but, um, yeah, it's, you know, spooky story. It's pretty spooky. Uh, mainly because of the name. Although why is it called phantom parrot? Like what's why that code name? Do you have an idea? Um, I mean, British make weird code names. That what was the other one called? Lucky Strike. Um, Lucky Strike, yeah. Phantom Parrot, probably because it is capable of parroting data. You know. Ah. Uh, and it. Ah. Uh, okay. Ghostly. Copy. I don't know. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Copy that. Like a copy. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. So. But. Or mimic. Yeah. Um.